Hello, everyone. Thanks for checking out this special episode of Really Dicey. This is Manny, and I am here with... Eleanor DeLorenzo. <laughs> Hi. And Hello, and, and I'm, I'm so excited to talk to you because um, you're, I'm very intrigued by your, your newest project, uh, Bison, uh, The Lost Mountain Saga. Um, I, I, uh, or Vasen, uh, uh, forgive my mispronunciation. It's such a fantastic role-playing game. And um, hearing the, the origins about this book is really intriguing. Um, mm -hmm. Would you like to share? Well, I guess first let's talk, because this, this originally came from a podcast, your podcast. Am I correct? Correct. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the podcast with the same name, uh, Lost Mountain Saga, to reiterate. <laughs> uh, and um, uh, yeah, so, so it started out with, um, you know, like uh, that's in the book. The core rule book came out and it was set in Uppsala, Sweden, which is my hometown. And I thought it would be so cool to write a, or like make an actual play podcast around that um, with with uh, two of my friends who are also in in, uh, in the role playing world, Sydney, Emmanuel and, and Richmond. And so we, so I asked them, I'm like, w w would you like to play some some cool stuff happening up in the myth, myth, mythological north, you know, my, my hometown and my home world, basically. And they, they were like, Fuck yeah, this was during the 2020 pandemic. So we were also starved for. <laughs> so yeah. And so we said, yay, let's do that. And uh, we got into it. And, and I, yeah, I started writing sort of the, the adventure. And then after, after that was launched and released and we, we got it out there in the world. I had talked a little bit with Free League before about wanting to start this project and they, they really liked it. And I think about a year later, uh, we, we had discussed collaborating on other, other things uh, that had sort of fallen through. Um, but then Thomas had in stand, who's the, who's the founder of, of Free League Publishing. He, he reached out and asked me if I want, would like to make an adventure for for Vassen because they were interested in in doing that. And I suggested, I'm like, how about Lost Mountain Saga? And he was like, actually, that's a really good idea. And so we, we started working on it to make it into a, an, a, an adventure uh, campaign that would be useful for other GMs because currently it was just like these ra rambling mess that worked for me, but obviously having to convert it into a book for other people then became the challenge. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so that's sort of the origin for that. Oh, excellent. Um, if, if I may ask for anyone hearing about this for the first time, what exactly is the Lost Mountain Saga? Um, so I would describe it, it's set in Sweden during the 19th century. Um, it's set in a, in a world where Vassen exists. And Vassen is a traditional folklore-ish a uh, little creature, uh, but or it doesn't have to be a creature, but it, it's sort of like the supernatural beings around us. It could be, you know, it's ghosts, it's monsters. Um, so it's, uh, and it's, it's uh, little, little tiny creatures as well. You know, it's all these little beings that exist in our folk culture and folklore. Um, and some of them are horrifying and some of them are actual, you know, monster like giants, trolls, dragons. And some of them are like little little gnomes, gnomey creatures, um, and ghosts and things like that. So, so it can easily turn into a. So it's like a, a pretty sad. It's a pretty. It's like a horror story, I would say, um, but with comedy <laughs> elements as well, uh, due to these creatures uh, being what they are. Um, the actual saga portion. Um, you start out as two or three or four sort of detectives who wants to uncover mysteries that are happening all over And And uh, you start out like, yeah, you start out, you know, in a, in a small town outside of Uppsala. Uh, or actually not. A, you start out in a town called Fallen, which is like two hours away from Uppsala, which is the sort of main uh, center of where the adventure takes place. Um because something weird is happening in that town and then you start and then you start like this new mystery and more and more gets revealed in that first chapter 
Um, but I will say it like it's a mix between a lot of fun stuff, a lot of Swedish culture uh, that might not be very um, uh, popular or common to talk about outside of Sweden, uh, like a lot about like our food culture, um, and then mixed with a lot of very gruesome and horrifying uh, side parts of it as well and also like social intrigue um yeah so that that's that's how i would describe it but uh, obviously it's an also it's a role-playing adventure campaign so which also means a couple of things so i feel like if people are thinking it's more like a book or it's a novel it's more like no it's it's you're supposed to play play it um yeah so that's that's how I, that's my that's my long way of describing what this what this <laughs> this thing is but uh, i would say it's a horror story that an interactive horror story uh oh, okay you could have written the story using a different gaming system in mind you know um there are different horror RPGs out there what 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 made you decide uh, vasim was the perfect system for your story I first first of all I think I think I had already been I had already been hooked because I had such a personal relationship with uh, Vasim since it's since it was not just my home country it was my hometown where the headquarters so so so, so I didn't necessarily have to create a new or learn about a new universe I could I could pivot from my own experience the rules I think are very straightforward in Vassin. I'm not very, uh, although that's true for a lot of horror RPGs. But but I think I I like the I like the um, the straightforwardness of the Vassin RPG. At the end of the day, the reason why I ended up choosing Vassin over any other was simply because uh, that initial love I had for the idea uh, just seemed like just just piqued, piqued my piqued my interest and I wanted to explore it more versus trying to learn a new system or getting to a different universe or a, yeah so uh, so it felt very natural to to start with Vasim. I also really like folklore. So what I'm enjoying most about the the Vasim books uh, is that I'm getting a peek into the uh, folklore and mythology of, of, of Sweden and the surrounding area. Um, which is fascinating. I, I think sometimes we think um, mythology is the same all over Europe, but in, in each area it's very distinct and, and rich mm. and, and very unique. Um, uh, for those that may not be familiar with with um, uh, Swedish mythology or folklore around the region, uh, how, how would you say it's different from typical mythology? The thing is, that's the thing. Like uh, like you say, it's it's. I think folklore and mythology, it's so similar in how um, sim like not similar they are. Like they all are so specific, you know, these creatures and, and monsters and folklore that we that surrounds us. Uh, they're almost ridiculous in its specificity. That's quite fun. And I, I'm sure that's true for other cultures as well. But like, you know, you have you have this one creature and how to like you need to give them you need to give them three flowers on the third day of the of the fourth month, you know, and, it, and it's unbelievably detailed and specific. That's always very fun. But then, of course, it's not just regional regional for, for Sweden. It's also like you ask one town about that creature, but then the next village, you know, two kilometers away will have a completely different story about that particular creature, you know. So it's the it travels it travels so much because it's that's what it was like it was these local local little stories that would explain natural phenomena to uh, or to scare the crap out of children <laughs> so they wouldn't do dumb dumb stuff um so i think that's the main reason why they exist versus uh, like you know and then you have the norse mythology which is the religion the the uh norse gods odin thor and freya and all those um th which is more i mean i wouldn't say a more structured or organized really i mean i guess it was organized religion but um but yeah like that's that's more of like the uh no one is preaching i would say the the gospel of the little garden gnome <laughs> uh in, in sweden so i think that's the sort of the big 
difference between a mythology versus say the, these little yeah the basin um but 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 obviously we've i've incorporated some norse mythology into lost mountain saga because it is so present in sweden even though we're we we got christian like uh, the christian christianity came in the well way well before i think during the medieval age uh so we've been a christian country for a while but but um but but now but there's still so many remnants of of the old the old gods which is pretty cool uh and rune you know we we have rune stones all over the the country um and old old traditions that we don't really know why we celebrate but we but it's very important how and i think actually that's also a good point it's all about the how with swedish traditions and not so much the why like we don't ask ourselves why do we pick seven flowers on midsummer's eve and then put it under our pillow and dream about the man we're gonna marry one day like that's a tradition that i did as a kid it's more like no it's specific you have to do it you have to pick a flower and then jump over a fence and then get pick another flower and then you, you know it's it's like it, that's that's what i like about our folk lore and culture is that you know the how is so important mm -hmm. So, uh, so this book is is, is about ninety six pages, um, has about five chapters, and and um, without spoiling too much, I, I see like hints of Vikings and asylums and witches. It looks really exciting. Um, I, I will do a future video talking about this more once once it's out in the public more. Can you share with us the process from converting from story of the podcast to a to a system that helps game masters? Use tools. I, I see the use the tools for the for this game. I see there's there's NPCs. I see there's maps. Uh, was the process difficult? Um, yes. <laughs> Long story short, yes, it was actually a lot more challenging than I thought it would be because um, as you GM, and I'm sure you know this as well, you can truly hand wave certain things and just be like, yeah, 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 yeah. You don't know that because I'm the GM. You're the player. I'm just gonna decide. The rule rule of fun or rule of cool is going to decide what happens here. So I had to make a lot more sense out of the out of the BS that I had thrown at my players during the podcast, which was tiff, tough. But fortunately, uh, Tulmas and Kiku, the two editors for Lost Mountain Saga, they had so many great ideas to help me. So they were with me the entire time while I was writing this, and they were like, "How about?" could we make something like this like to make it mechanically make sense but also story-wise like what if we make like we had to narrow down the uh, some of the npc the evil npcs just to to make them more, make more sense also in the podcast i had like this narrative based on i like to tie in then the backgrounds of the characters into the adventure so there was a couple of very heavy story focused points in the podcast that was directly tied into especially Sydney's character but I had to remove all of that for the uh, for the written campaign of course because you know his backstory um Sydney's character's backstory uh he uh, he he was obviously not going to be part of the of the adventure because he didn't exist so yeah so that that was a cha that was challenging and then obviously English is my second language, so always writing in a different language is, is tough. Um, and then I, I also had to, I translated it also back into Swedish, which was also kind of a mind, mind, brain, I'm trying not to swear, <laughs> so, <laughs> a, a, a brain problem. But yeah, so that, but that, but it was fun. I will, I mean, 10 out of 10, I would recommend if, if someone gets the opportunity, it's, it's a lot of fun to, to think of these things. When it comes to inspiration, if I wanted to, to get more into the mindset of this game, is there anything you would recommend for like movies or music to listen to, something to help prepare me? Um, so, well, I, I mean, I think The Witcher is a great uh, the game, and I haven't I've only seen season one of the Netflix show, but The Witcher is a very similar setting. Uh, like you play a you play like a, a person who banishes evil beings um that's i would say that's exactly what vasin is the game the game uh in terms of inspiration for for the uh, culture and mood 
you don't necessarily like in my opinion i i think if you're an american or if you're from a different country and have no relation to sweden or the north at all i wouldn't try to like not because it's not fun but i wouldn't try to like okay i'm going to i'm going to do a swedish accent and try to be swedish to get this swedish experience <laughs> uh and end up sounding like the swedish muppet chef guy <laughs> like uh, you know like i would rather than just uh, approach it like you would approach any other universe you might not be you know haven't been born in but like just be like all right how do i make this my own and make what what's fun about this and take out the fun stuff um not worry too much about pr- pronouncing the things correctly like change the names if you have to like you know i would i would do that and just try to make it your you know your own and in terms of yeah the mood i listen to a lot of uh which is because it was also created by a swedish company but the the video game little nightmares um that sort of fairy tale esque nightmare music is really really great for for the mood uh for 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 vasen because it has sort of the it is like a fairy fairy horror uh and you want to you want to get into that mindset of like dark woods mysterious things lurking in the shadows uh there should feel like this uncomfortable there should be a slight uncomfortable feeling in your chest but still like it's somewhat cozy <laughs> hmm. um and because that at least that's the feeling i get when i'm when i'm walking around the forests back home in sweden uh just like th- there's some there's a presence like there's a presence a mysterious presence that makes you uneasy but it still makes you feel cozy and at home it's hard to it's hard to describe but it is sort of that's at least what i what i was going for uh when i initially started writing this but and, and how you get to that point and if you even want to get to that point is of course going to be different for everyone but i would find i would try to find hooks that you could either yeah either relate to your own culture or try i mean go for it it's not like i'm sp- on sp- speaking on behalf of all Swedes it's not like you're going to ever offend any one of us for trying <laughs> uh so uh so it's always fun to just hear people take a stab at something i've written even if it's if it's a different culture you know it's it's always fun um mm. i welcome everyone to try and have fun is there going to be uh, I, I know this book just just coming out right now uh but is there any thoughts of continuing this either uh either book form or through your podcast the so podcast i think if i if i would make more vast and stories it would be in a different i would not do more lost mountain saga specifically because uh, or maybe i would do then with a different group of people because um the first run was sort of um you know it it sort of ended <laughs> by the end when they were done uh for those characters um uh, but i want to do a lot more like i would love to go get back into the, that world and into podcasting again um from this of course with everything it's time commitment right now um i have so many ideas for for a season 3 of the lost mountain saga but also for more adventures in this universe like Um I recently bought a cabin in the north of Sweden uh that has like this very rich cool history so I'm excited to write an adventure around that um so that would be cool but n- right now I don't have necessarily any any solid plans uh, I just had a baby so I, that's take that's taking a lot of my my current current time Uh, but one never knows i want to i want to go back to it um and i have at some point i would i think i think i definitely will let that temptation get get over me and and, and i will probably start writing something again <laughs> so yeah. i have one last question for you what do you find scary what what monsters make you uh, uh afraid of the dark oh um okay i'm an extremely af- afraid like i'm afraid of everything uh despite being like not believing in anything it's a, it's a weird uh, it's a weird thing that i'm afraid of ghosts without believing in ghosts you know but when it's dark it's uh it, it, i my mind plays plays tricks with me 
Um, so, but anything, I think there's like things that I find scary are the jump scares in movies, you know, like uh, I find dinosaurs super scary. Uh, I think, I think, uh, but then, you know, when, when, after I became a mother, anything that relates to children, like anything that's like have a dead babies or whatever, like that's intensely emotionally charged for me at this point. Um, and, uh, but I will say like things that scares me, I can, I mean, I have a long list of things that scares me. I, I'm scared of wind. I'm scared of dinosaurs. I'm scared of the space. I'm scared of not being in space. I'm scared of, uh, you know, the world ending anytime now. Uh, so, <laughs> so, um, I have a lot of things I can pull from when writing scary stuff because mm-hmm. I find everything scary. Um, but I also think a lot of things are cool. So. I'm like, I always want to go there. I'm like, oh man, what if this guy is not just a weird man in the forest? What if he's also someone who like sucks you down into the ground and then you suffocate to death? You know, like not to be brutal, but that's, that's sort of where my mind goes because I I want to relive my, my own nightmares because I'm apparently a sadist. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, in that way, I'm, I'm not necessarily a fan of horror because I'm scared of everything but I love writing it. So it's, it's a weird, it's a weird combo. Oh, sometimes writing could be uh, therapeutic that way. I know for me, it is that way as well. Um, yeah. Well, thank you so much for writing this and uh, thank you for thank taking you. the, thank you for taking the time to talk to us about, about your book. Uh, I, I can't wait to play this. Uh, I've been looking for, um, I, I, I've been wanting a, a, a good Halloween game this year. Oh. Uh, to, to learn and play. And I think this is, this, this came at the right time for me to try out. So, uh, so yes, thank you very much. And, um, to, to our viewers out there, thank you for listening. Um, be safe out there. Watch out for the dark. We'll see you soon. Yeah. <laughs> thank you.